everyone and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to be going over the new Airbus A330-900 by Headwind. So if you want to get an up-close and in-personal view at this beautiful aircraft, then I think you should stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. Alright everyone, and welcome into Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to be taking a little closer look at this beautiful A330 and try to see if it's something worth picking up for free, mind you, over at flightsim.to. Oh, and by the way, if you are new to the channel, I highly suggest you go down below, hit that subscribe, and tick that little bell. If you'd like to help us out, smash on that thumbs up while you're down there. It is greatly appreciated. All right, so the first thing that we notice looking at the exterior of the beautiful aircraft in front of us, well, one of the first things I notice are those lovely little wheel chocks down here. Now, these things do disappear when you hit the parking brake release, so don't be alarmed that you won't be able to move anywhere because they will disappear on you. I will say that the exterior of this plane looks gorgeous and I know they are continually working over there at Headwind to try to perfect this to what the A320 is. Now they are using the A320 virtual cockpit I believe and they are going to be upgrading to the 0.7 version. Now one thing I notice right here, whoops, now that is a bug that they do tell you on flightsim.to that if you were to get too close to the fuselage, it will disappear. So I think they're gonna be working on that and that should be rectified here in the near future. Now another thing I can see right here and, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but it looks like there's a flat panel out here on the exterior of this aircraft. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there or not, but uh, just something to bring to your attention. They might be working on that as well in the future. Now they did say that they are going to be working on some wing flex for this aircraft. I did notice that when flying, the wings did flex quite a bit. So there is some wing flex added. I'm not sure if it's as realistic as it, it, it should be, but uh, I think they're going to be working on that, like I said, in the uh, near future. Now, the other thing that you will notice on the beautiful A330 is that landing gear, everyone. It has the tilted landing gear for those butter landings. Oh, and look! Looks like somebody had just spawned right beneath me. Hey there! <laughs> so, and look at him. It looks like the front of him is tilted up. Yeah, it looks like you might have a little bit too much weight in there, so... Let's take a look at these beautiful jet engines, and they look gorgeous, by the way, modeled beautifully. Now, as you can see around the bell here, around the housing, you can see some facets here, and then that probably will get worked out as we move on. But um, all in all, for a freeware aircraft, it is gorgeous on the outside. So now let's mosey on over to this side and let's take a look and see if we can find anything out of the ordinary with this. Gosh, the front of this thing looks, whoops, when it's there, it looks magnificent, magnificent. Oh, and uh, by the way, I thought that was that guy down there trying to start his engines. Well, let's see how far he can make it with, with this big old 330 sitting on top of him. Gosh, the engines are spot on. They are gorgeous. Gorgeous. Let's take a look at these wings. Wow. Wow. Just just look at the reflections off of the wings here. Oh, this is amazing. Amazing. Look at that, everybody. Beautiful. Beautiful. I give them guys over at Headwind an A-plus thumbs up. They are doing a fantastic job. And again, for this to have just come out, amazing, amazing. And from what I hear, this is the replacement for the A330 Mega Pack because that will no longer be used 
Let's go down here and take a look at this engine and see if we still see those facets in there. From a distance, you can't, but yes, they are still there. Again, I don't really think that bothers me all that much because this is such a beautiful rendition. This guy down here is really having a hard time starting that plane up. Hey, buddy, make sure you got the fuel valve on. Hey, <laughs> there he goes. All right, so let's hop in here and see. Well... So it looks like that's going to be one of the problems. If you want to kind of peruse through the uh, cabin area, I don't think you're going to be able to, at least using the uh, drone cam. Now, we haven't, I haven't checked out... Oh, that's weird. You see the wing out there. Now, I haven't checked out any of the external views or internal views yet. For now, let's go ahead and hop in the cockpit and let's check this bad boy out. By the way, if you guys have any questions or comments, please go ahead and post those down below, and I will get to those as soon as possible. All right, everyone, so welcome to the cockpit of the beautiful Headwind A330-900. And, oh, it looks like we have a blue-haired first officer. Good eye, mate. All right, so uh, now the other thing is there's a little glitch here that if you kind of turn away from him, he kind of disappears on you, so... I don't know, that might bug some people. It does for me. I, I wish I could get rid of him, and I probably can if I go in the config setting. Now, one of the first things you're gonna notice in the cockpit here is we do not have an EFB, and that's probably gonna be coming in the near future. So as you can see, looking at the cockpit, the textures do look pretty good. It looks like it does need some work up here by the FMS. I also noticed that if you're flying at nighttime, the numbers here and the letters here on the unit do not light up so that could be problematic if you like doing night flights so you're gonna have to use your overhead dome light here if you're gonna want to program anything during night flights but other than that all in all the textures on the seats look beautiful look you can even see the little ripples down here oh it's just it's fantastic this looks a little flat up against the wall but uh things may change here in the near future Hopefully they'll incorporate a lot of the different sounds out of the A320 flyby wire, but time will tell. All right, so let's step upstairs here and check out the overhead panel. So it looks very, very similar to the uh, A330. Now I do notice some texturing issues around these switches. They look a little funny to me. So that might be because of an FXS FSX conversion. I'm not sure of what they did with this plane, um, but I can tell you that the textures around these look a little... As you can see, they just look a little funny. Things may change in the future, but uh, for right now, <laughs> this it's uh, looking pretty nice. So let's go ahead and get some power on in here. Let's take a look at some quirks that the FMS unit has. So, battery one and two, and let's turn on some external power. I'm not really going to turn on much of anything else up here because it pretty much works the same as the A320 flyby wire. But I did notice when you activate your IRSs here, your 1, 2, and 3, the battery light does come on correctly. All right, so again, uh, we're not going to talk much about anything up here. Everything pretty much works as you would expect it other than the little bit of texturing issues. So let's step downstairs and take a look at the FMS unit. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice is that a lot of this looks very, very similar to the uh, Airbus A320 fly-by-wire. Even if you hit over into the options menu, it has your realism. So you can set your align time, which is pretty cool. So on the AOC menu, if you go down, it also has your sim brief. So if you click on that, it will bring up your sim brief ID. Now, if you were previously using the A320 or are using the A320, then all of your sim brief information should already be there. So that is pretty cool. Now we're going to go back and we can go down and check. You have your no smoking signs. In here, you can also adjust what type of weight unit you want, your default barrow, also your threshold altitudes in here as well. So you can adjust all of this stuff, which is pretty cool. I really like that feature that you can go in here and adjust most of this stuff. Now, one of the things that I found that you cannot adjust, if you go into the fuel menu, 
no matter what I type in here, it doesn't really matter. It will not allow you to post that in your zero fuel weight. So I think that in itself, that's probably the only bug that I really see in this particular unit is that I can't put my zero fuel weight in. Now there is one other bug and yeah, I, I did forget, I'm sorry. So if we go to the MCDU and click on the ATSU and click over here to the AOC menu, click on the performance button, you're gonna notice this menu here. Now usually all of this when you click on OFP request, it should automatically populate all of this stuff in here for you from your SimBrief flight plan. Unfortunately, this is not populating any of this information in here other than passengers and it does have zero fuel weight center gravity, but other than that, it doesn't have anything else in here. And if you look up here to the fuel on board, it always will say zero. So at the moment, to be able to set your fuel and your baggage, you need to go up to the top here and go on to your fuel menu. And from this menu is where you're gonna be able to set your payload and your fuel. I'm sure in the future, they're gonna work this out to be more like the A320 fly-by-wire. But for right now, this is a little workaround that you gotta do. All right, so now that we had taken a look at the MCDU menu, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the other functions here. So we're gonna tap on the init button, and right up here, it also has the init request. So if we hit on that button right there, it will now populate all of our information right from SimBrief, right down here on the FMS. And we can scroll to the next page and take a look at what we have here. Now again, if you were to try to input a block fuel here, so let's just say if we type in 15.8 and try to put in a block fuel, it will not allow us to enter that block fuel information. If you were to click up here on the zero fuel weight, just like you would in the uh, fly-by-wire, it's gonna bring up what you have on board and your zero fuel weight center gravity, but when you go to tap it again, it will tell you that it's not allowed. So. Again, these are just a few minor bugs that are in this system, and I believe a lot of this is gonna be worked out on future updates. Oh, and by the way, if the video is helping you today, or you just enjoy watching it, a thumbs up to the channel would be spectacular. And if you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell to get notified on all of our future videos. So now if we hit on the flight plan button, it will bring up our flight plan just as it normally would. So this is working splendidly. If you click on your destination airport, you can select your arrivals just as you would normally and insert that into the flight plan. So all of that seems to be working perfectly. The radio and nav features, that is all working, so you can enter what you need to in there. Uh, the secondary flight plan button is not working, but I don't really think that's a big deal. You have your ATC and comm menus. I probably really never even use this menu, so if you do, let me know, and let me know what you use it for. I don't really fly the A330 or 320 much, so it may be something I just don't know. So put it down below, if you know. <laughs> All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is the data function. And again, I don't really use this much, but it is there. If you hit on the performance button, it will bring up all of our takeoff flap performance. And again, you have to enter your flap number in here. So we're just gonna enter number one, pop it in, and now you can just double tap on each of these. V1, VR, and V2. All right, so now that has populated all of our V speeds in for us, you can then go to your next phase, next phase, next phase, and next phase, and see everything in here looks pretty good. So other than the couple bugs with the fuel on board and setting the fuel in the FMS, I think they are on their way to a beautiful rendering of the A330. So let's take a look at the ECAM menu here in the very center. Let's turn up some display color here. And we go from left to right, so we have our engines, we have bleed, we have pressure, we have electric. The next one that we have is hydraulics. Now the hydraulic menu is also not functioning at the moment from what I can tell. Well, obviously, because it's blank. But the fuel 
flight controls, the wheel, the door, the air conditioning, and the APU seem to be working flawlessly. Also, your takeoff configuration is working as well. From what I see here, everything looks to be coming just fine. Oh, and by the way, if you are going to be going through your checklist, don't expect this uh, hydraulic gauge to work for your brakes if you're going to be checking that because I guess the hydraulic system in this plane is not working right now. Hey, there he popped back in over there. But as far as everything else is concerned in the cockpit here, I must say it is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now I know everybody wants to know, what does it sound like when it starts up? So, let's go through that right now and see what this sounds like. By the way, if you want to see what this looks like taking off with that amazing landing gear, then wait till the end of the video because we're going to launch this thing into outer space. And let's take a look and see how it handles things. Let's step up topside again and let's get this thing going. Now, for all of you procedural nuts out there, I'm not following procedures. I'm just pretty much going to get this thing going and let's just make everything say one. And I think that's pretty much what we're going to do right now. Hey, good old Penske! And if anybody wants to know how I got these beautiful custom ground liveries in here, we're going to be talking about that on a future episode. So stay tuned for that one. But boy, does this sound gravy. Go down here, let's get this in crank mode and get engine one starting. And by the way, folks, before you try to start up your exterior engines, make sure that you have the APU bleed on. It will greatly help you in starting up your engines. As you can tell, I'm not an A330 pilot, so I don't claim to be. Let's get back outside and hear it. That just sounds beautiful. Not as good as the A320 fly-by-wire, but... I don't know, maybe it does! Let me know if you think it sounds just the same as the A320. Let me know down in the comments below. But man, look at her go! Beautiful, just beautiful! Pristine! Let's hop back inside, hit engine one. Hmm, amazing. Oh, and by the way, the lights on this thing are another thing of beauty. The lights on this plane are amazing. Hey, why don't we do this? I'm going to turn night mode on. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. If ever there was to applaud, now would be it. Look at that. Gorgy, gorgy, gorgy. All right, now that we made sure everybody is safe, we turned off the exterior power, we can get a pushback. I love the new ground crews. And all the, uh, actually I should say I love the new ground vehicles. They are amazing, the crash trucks, the regular vehicles, the Penske fuel, it's all beautiful. Now the one thing that the A330 does not offer, like the fly-by-wire is, you cannot configure your throttles it's a little fiddly i should say with that let's go ahead and get this up in the air Alright, so what I want to do is we're just going to make a little loop-de-loop -loop here 
and we're gonna come back in for a landing so everybody can get a good look at how this thing lands. And you can definitely tell you are flying a much bigger plane with this. The controls are very, very sluggish. So keep that in mind when you're flying this thing. Very big plane. And hey, I'm not the best, so... All of you critiquers out there, this isn't for the uh, most butteriest landing. I just want to show you how beautiful the landing gear looks. Gorgeous outside here. Looks like we are on a perfect descent right here. Speed is coming down beautifully. I just hope we don't uh, flub it up. Alright everyone, so that is it. I hope everybody enjoyed the video here today and maybe this uh, swayed your decision whether you want to go ahead and give this A330 a try. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please go ahead and post those down below. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. And while you're down there, smash the thumbs up button and to all of my flight simming community around the world keep the blue side up we will see you on the next one thanks for watching everyone